So packet four, this is the second worksheet in there, topic seven, horizontal and vertical motion. Uh, again, number one is, I think, easier, so let's do number two. Two particles move along the x-axis. Topic four. I can <coughs> topic seven on packet four, excuse me. And this is number two. Two particles move along the x-axis. So we're going left and right. For time between 0 and 8, the position of the particle P is given by x of P is natural log T squared minus 2T plus 10. And you know what? While, while I'm thinking about it, as soon as I see motion, my brain starts thinking position, velocity, acceleration. Right? Take a derivative to go down the the chain, take an antiderivative to move up the chain. So already, I mean, they haven't even asked, but I can guess they're going to ask about velocity of the particle P, which way is it moving, those kind of questions, maybe even acceleration. The velocity of particle Q t squared minus 8t plus 15, and particle Q is at position x equals 5 when t equals 0. So what do you, what, maybe what do you notice first before we even read a question? What about this information that they gave us? What might we need to take note of? Two, two particles, okay. So we definitely have two different particles. So we've got a P and a Q. Um, what do you notice about what they gave us for P and for Q? They gave us different stuff. So not hard, but I better be on my toes here. They gave me the position for P and the velocity for Q. So, I mean, I'm certain they're going to want me to be moving up and down this position, velocity, acceleration uh, train here. Part A, for 0 to 8, when is particle P moving to the left? Well, it doesn't ask us to justify, but let's, let's justify first so we know what we're looking for. How do I know when P moves left? When velocity is negative. So when velocity of P is negative. So let's get a velocity of P. Derivative of natural log is 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. it. So I want to know when that thing is negative without a calculator. Okay, I think I need to, well I know when the top is zero. That's when t equals one. So there's one change of signs. Now I need to figure out when the bottom is zero. And of course they gave me one that doesn't factor. And I don't have a calculator. Curses. So how do I figure out where the bottom is zero without a calculator and without being able to factor? Mm -hmm. Algebra experts. What's it take to find the zeros of this thing if it doesn't how do you solve a quadratic if it doesn't factor a quadratic formula yuck but I don't know what else to do because I've got to find where this thing is zero so I know where it changes directions and then I'll set up the number line and test the points but well, I got to find the zeros first uh, so x equals or I guess t equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's really just a, a chance to sing. 4 minus 40 is negative 36. Oh, this is good news. Why is that good news? That doesn't work. No, 
I mean, officially, that would be no real numbers there. That's six I, but we don't have I's. So this is great. There's no, no times um, for where the bottom is zero. So I don't have to worry about it. That's nice. So the only thing I'm worried about is t equals 1. So let's find uh, v of 0 and v of 2. Although still not, I think the, the alternating rule would work here. So v of 0, that would be negative 2 over 10. So that would be negative. So my velocity uh, from 0 to 1, because we're only going 0 to 8, is negative. Velocity at 2, um, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2 is 2. And then in the bottom, 4 minus 4 plus 10. I don't really care what all that is. I only care if it's negative or positive. And so all that turns out to be positive. OK, so now let's make sure we answer the question. P moves left, and velocity is negative, so on 0 to 1. Now, question D. For 0 to 8, find all times t during which the two particles travel in the same direction. So what does that mean? <clears throat> like what's it doesn't again doesn't say justify, but what am I looking for? What would that mean if they're traveling in the same direction? Same sign. Same sign of what? Velocity. Their velocity has the same sign. So they may not be at the same spot, but they do have the same velocity. They're moving toward the right or toward the left. So V P and V Q have same sign. Oh, well, we already have the V. Maybe I should label this. This was P. We already have a velocity um, sort of profile or picture for P. Now we just need one for Q. And Q, they gave me the velocity, so I don't need a derivative. Uh, and they were kind enough to make it factorable. That quadratic, that was the, they almost made it terrible, but then it worked. And then when we really needed it to work, it did. So velocity sign chart for Q. So I could check 0, and 4, and 6. Maybe I can just alternate and not worry about it. Uh, but if I check 0, v of 0 would be 15. v of 4 should be negative, but I guess we should maybe check one of them. 16 minus 32 plus 15. 16 and 15 is 31. Minus 32 is negative, barely, but negative. And the last one will be positive, just because I know it alternates. So maybe it would have been helpful to overlay the, the two velocity profiles, although it's not hard, because this one only changes at 1. <coughs> so at 1, vp is negative, and then after that is positive. So they have the same sign from 1 to 3 and 5 to 8. So 1 to 3 and 5 to 8, um, they travel in the same direction. Yes, sir? <coughs> Couldn't you have also, like, to check it, like, like the number of points into the, like, factor form? Yes, yes. It may be, easy, may be easier. Yeah, to check velocity, uh, I, I plugged them into here. Certainly 0 was easier in there. But when it came to 4, you're right, it probably would have been better to plug it in here, because then it's real easy. It's just 
1 times negative 1. So yeah, that's negative. Also makes it easy to check 6. Positive times positive is positive. And then again, you're looking for the overlap of the same. So from 1 to 3, it's positive. And 5 to 8, it's positive. Part C. Find the acceleration of particle Q at time 2. Okay, that's not bad because that's, um, that's just the derivative of, of the velocity. So AQ is dvq dt. And so dq is up there. So aq is 2t minus 8. Well, all problems should be so easy. Um, oh, wait, that's not all of it, though. At time 2. So aq at time 2 is 4 minus 8. Well, I could save stop that, but I think I'm going to have to use it later, so I may as well say that that's negative 4. Is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at time equals 2? So what tells us if speed is increasing or decreasing? What am I looking at? What's that? Acceleration and velocity. I look at both, and what am I looking at? I'm looking at their signs. And if they're the same, then we're speeding up either backwards or forwards. And if they're different, then they're like fighting each other, so we're slowing down. So I need VQ of 2, which we kind of already found. We didn't like find it exactly, but we do know that it's, we already found that it's positive. So I don't need to find it exactly. All I really need to say is that it's positive. Because we already found that. We already stated that. I suppose if you plugged it in and found the exact value, that would be fine. Is the speed particle increasing? So uh, AQ of 2 and VQ of 2 have different signs. So the particle is slowing down. Lastly, find the position of the particle Q the first time it changes directions. Okay, so there's like a couple things going on in there. Find the position of particle Q. So I need X of Q. When, well, I, I know when it changes directions because I have a velocity uh, picture of Q. So looking at that, when does when is the first time it changes direction? At 3. So, all right, so that's part of my answer is find x of q when t equals 3. Okay, so they're just being q with that changes direction thing. Um, v of q, or vq, t squared minus 8t plus 15. Well, this is this is going backwards. So now this is what we thought would happen, right? They ask us some questions that forced us to take a derivative. Now they're asking us a question that forces us to go backwards. So let's integrate the velocity. So that would be t cubed over 3 minus 4t squared plus 15t plus c. Um, the plus c isn't uh, that's kind of annoying, but they told us that when t is 0, the position is 5. So if the position is 5 when t is 0, 0, 0, 0, c is 5. So t cubed over 3 minus 4t squared plus 15t plus 5 and 
and we want that at time equals 3. Now this is the last thing it's asked for, so I'm definitely going to safe stop this. 3 cubed over 3, minus 4 times 3 squared, plus 15 times 3, plus 5. Don't know what that is, don't care what that is, leave it alone. Uh, also, if you take note of the uh, the time there, timestamp on the video is 15:25, uh, and we took a little bit of time introing this problem and explaining and taking questions. So, <clears throat> again, right at 15 minutes um, to work that one. That one, like, I would think you hope you get one like that on the AP test, right? Like, I would think most of you would get nine out of nine um, on that problem. Now I'm curious what the point breakdown is. So let's Google 2017 calculus AB scoring guideline. It will also be the answer, but we have the answers, we think. There we go. Google the right thing, get the first answer right away. Question was this? Oh, number five. There we go. Okay, uh, that's too small for you to read. Maybe that's a little better. So part A was worth two points. Uh, I'm thinking. Let's go back and go back and forth here. So part A was um, find the derivative. No, find when it's negative. So that was pretty easy. Part B was two points. Hey, there's our sign chart. Um, that looks a lot better than ours because they, they put them right on top of each other, so it's really easy to see where they match. Part C, the acceleration at two and then the speed decreasing with reason. So if, if you only said the speed was decreasing, um, and you didn't have the reason or you had a wrong reason, you wouldn't have gotten that point. You had to have both. And then part D was the hardest part, so it did have three points associated with it, but um, antiderivative, use the initial condition, get the answer. Um, I would hope everyone would at least get the antiderivative, and if you forgot or messed up, messed up from there, you know, hopefully you got seven to nine or nine out of nine on that one. Okay, back to, let's, let's do some of the multiple choice. Ooh, number three. This would be a good review of some things here. A particle moves along the y-axis so that its velocity is given by this thing. What is the acceleration? Oh, we do get a calculator, so that's nice. I can find one. What is the acceleration of the particle at time two? Okay, well it gives me velocity. I want acceleration. So that's dv dt. Um, I was thinking derivative of inverse tangent, but I don't need to know that because the calculator is going to do that for me. So one minus inverse tangent e to the x. <coughs> For time greater than zero, we want at time two. Um, rather than messing with the graph and trying to figure out what the picture looks like, especially for like one problem here, I'm just going to do the derivative on the main screen here. Because if I go to the graph, then I have to play with the, 
the window and make sure it looks right and it's just easier to do it on the main screen for this one. Negative 0.133. There we go. Number four. A particle moves along the y-axis so that its velocity is what we just did. At what time does it reach its highest point? So what would we be looking for for its highest point? What would, what would the velocity be doing at the highest point, I guess? What's that? Changing sign. Changing, and be more specific. Signs. Which way, though? So I need to look on my graph and see where the velocity changes from positive to negative. So there's my graph, but like I was worried about, I can't see anything. Um, okay, it asked me about what time, and my times are all like less than one, or one or less. So I'll make my x max 1.5. And maybe my Y max needs to be pretty small as well. I don't know. Maybe three to five that work. Oh, it needs to be even smaller than that. But but I see where it changes from positive to negative. Right there. Okay. Second calc zero. It's left bound, right bound, guess. So right there, the velocity changes from positive to negative. So that's its highest point, 0.443. Number five. Particle moves along the y-axis so that its velocity is given by the same thing we've been dealing with. At time zero, the particle is at y equals negative one. What is the position at time two? Well, if I have velocity and I want position, I need to integrate the velocity. And I can either find c or I can use the limits that it gives me time 0, time 2. So I think I'll go 0 to 2. x of 2 minus x of 0. And it gives me x of 0. And I'm looking for x of 2. So x of 2 equals x of 0 plus that integral. So x of 2 is negative 1 plus that integral, negative 1 plus math 9, 0 to 2, y1 dx, negative 1.36, there it is. So a, a small set of velocity questions. here. Okay, six is pretty similar. Um, six, seven, and eight, and nine all go with, they all have like the same velocity. So, yeah, we got time left. I'm going to hit pause. Why don't you try six, seven, eight, and nine, and then we'll come back and look at them. So number six, take an antiderivative of velocity to get position. Seven is just look at the graph and see where velocity is negative. Oh, where'd it go? Disappeared on me. Uh-oh. Gone. Um, eight, speed, so absolute value. So I knew it had to be one of these. Like it couldn't be negative because speed's never negative. And 
man, I don't know what happened. I cleared this out here. Natural log x squared minus 3x plus 3. And there's what I tried for um, average value. So average speed, number 9. I went integral from 0 to 2, 1 over 2. But that wasn't even an answer choice. Do you know why? Speed. That's not speed. That's velocity. So I needed to have absolute value bars on there. So let's try that again. Second entry, but let's put absolute value bars around the right thing. There we go. See if that gets us an answer we like. 0.371. There we go. I was fortunate that my mistake did not lead to one of the answer choices. Okay, so through 14 is with calculator, and then picking up at 15 is is no calculator. But man, these get kind of repetitive. They're all kind of the same thing. What did you do for number, six? number six. So I knew to get a position, I needed to take the antiderivative, right, x, v, a. So I need to antiderivative v to get position. Um, and it gave me two times to use, so I used two and five. Antiderivative of velocity gets me position, x of five minus x of two. Uh, x of two is eight, so I move the eight over, and eight plus two to five would give me the answer. Uh-oh, I wonder what I did wrong. Thank you for calling me on that. Let's see. 8 plus math 9, 2 to 5, of y1, 12.37. Yes, thanks for calling me out. I don't know what I did to get 4.74. Ian? Oh, there it was, 12.37. I just marked the wrong thing. Uh, number eight. Um, so the main thing with number eight is that speed is absolute value of velocity. And so all I have to do is plug in two to the velocity equation and take its absolute value. Now, how I did that, uh, I guess you could do the, wait, not two, but 1.5. Uh, how I did it was uh, on the graph, I did second calc, find me a value at 1.5. And so that's negative 0.287, but that's the velocity. The speed would be positive 0.287. Uh, you could do it on the table, but you'd have to mess with your table to get 1.5 to show up. Um, if you want to be kind of fancy, you can do it on the main screen as y1 of 1.5, like function notation, and there it is as well. Okay, again, I think I'm going to stop there. That leaves you with uh, a few left to do, but this is the end of the packet, and you not due till Monday, so uh, you got plenty of time. So what should you study for the test? I mean, it's an old AP test, so there's not like, hey, focus on this. It's like, it's everything. Um, again, I would point you to, on the, in Schoology, I've got a, a AB formula sheet. So you might look over that. It's a ton of stuff, but hopefully you know most of it. There may be a few things you need to review. but. It's not like tied to a packet. It's literally an old AP test. So it is, it's everything.
It's only multiple. It's only the multiple choice part of an old AP test. There's no FRQs. There's no FRQs or Thursday. Or Thursday. Okay. I, can, I don't know if this will show up on the video, but um, <coughs> so it's it's the first two pieces of an old AP test, not the FRQ stuff. And it's it's so old. It, it was before they changed the format, so it's not exactly like this, but. Close enough. 